Talkface here. Today we're going to learn about inductive spiking, what it is, and how to protect against it in your projects. So what is inductive spiking? What happens is when you have electricity flowing through a wire, as we learned in basic physics, it creates a magnetic field, which in the case of this relay is a great thing because it's what closes the relay and does whatever it is you need that relay to do. The problem comes is when you turn that relay off and now you no longer have electricity flowing through the coil, which means the magnetic field is going to collapse. The relay releases, which is what you want, but you've got to deal with the energy stored in that magnetic field. Otherwise, you it induces a spike as that magnetic field collapses. You have a moving field past a wire, which is going to create electricity or induce electricity into the line. So you have to give that electricity someplace to go or else you'll end up with a spike like you're seeing on the screen. And you don't want that in your project. How do you protect against the inductive spike with this diode? Well, uh, let me take the uh, covers off here and show you what's going on. And gives a little bit better view of what's happening. So uh, if you're working on a project, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you get a relay that has this built-in LED. It really helps for troubleshooting because the LED will light when you uh, apply power to it. So in a normal unmodified relay, which is this one at this point, the electricity comes in, goes up, and it takes one of two paths. One path takes it through the LED and lights it out to ground. The other one, there's a tiny little wire. I don't even know if you can see it. But that one goes into the relay, runs around in circles, creates a magnet, closes the relay. So you need to put the diode in so that it blocks the power coming in in normal circumstance. So normal circumstance, it comes in. So you want the leg of the diode with the white line to be connected to the positive side. So in normal circumstance, the power comes in, the diode says, "Not, nah, I'm not gonna let you go through there, forces the electricity come up here, do what it's supposed to do. Then on the back side, when you have a, when you turn the power off, the current is wants to travel basically backwards uh, from your on your circuit. So it's going to want to come back out the positive line and you, you really don't want that. So then by having the power allowed to go this way, if you will, that's how I think of it, from the negative to the positive, you have the current flowing that way. And I'm using power and current interchangeably here. Uh, it allows it to go in and it's just going to cycle around in circles here and dissipate inside the coil harmlessly and so you don't get any spikes. So that's how you prevent it. Now, a professional designer will deal with this in his design, but when you're modifying something and you, you become that designer, so you need to deal with the spike in your project. This is how I install a diode into a relay. With the relays, with the LEDs in them, it is very important that you put it in the right way because if you put it in backwards, it creates a dead short and will blow fuses in your project, which, of course, you're putting fuses in your project, right? If you don't uh, do it right, it will cause problems. So the way I do it is on the relays, you'll see there's kind of a little gap right there. So we've got the relay or the line that's coming down from the... the uh, diode here and then there's the line that's coming from the coil itself. I just kind of slip it in there. It's just a little V spot and it seems to fit just right. And then I'm going to try and solder this on screen. Normally I have a little vise that I put it on, but you may or may not have the vise. Let's see if I can actually do this. No, that's too hard to do it with that device. So we're just going to add the device to the mix and uh, see if we can't get my shaky old hands to work this way. 
us magic together. Okay, did that take you? Yeah. When I do that, it's always hot. Okay, I'm gonna take this out and turn it the other way. Careful, that's hot. So I flipped it around the other way. Off camera, I bent this little leg to make it come directly in contact with the solder joint. Just makes it a little easier. First one's always, for me, the hardest one because it tends to want to weave a wobble around. So let's see if we can get that one to... This time I'm going to test it with my screwdriver instead of my fingertip. Also hard for me to see this. There we go. That worked out. Now. Okay. So next step, being careful because that's still going to be hot. Take that snippet. I've got these uh, close cutting wire cutters. Yeah. There, put the top back on it, and it only goes one way. Like that only goes one way, like that, and you're done. So, when I ship these out, I actually mark the positive side, which is which is this side which is pin eight. And so if you're gonna make one of these yourself, you wanna put that white line next to pin eight. The other side goes to pin seven. And that's all there is to it. Uh, like I say, again, my marking, I'll actually put a label on this because I sell these and I just want it easy for my customers, but I'll just mark it with a Sharpie. So now when you plug it together, you know that's the, positive side and then I put a label there. I don't have those printed out, but I'll put that on before I ship this one. But basically uh, somebody's going to buy this. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you like this sort of thing, please thumbs up it, like it, subscribe if you want, and y'all have a nice day. Bonus footage. I thought I'd show you how I test every single one of the relays that I make before I send it out to my customers. So this is my little test rig that I've got. I've got the oscilloscope here. I've got my uh, multimeter set to continuity mode in the back. You might be able to hear it. So when the two connect and uh, then off to the side over here, I have a 12 volt power supply, which is right here. So to simulate what goes on in your car, this is an unmodified relay. And so we turn voltage on. And I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but I'll put it on. And actually, I'll make this the screenshot that you saw at the beginning of, this, of the video. But our peak-to-peak -peak voltage from the high to the high was 548 volts. It's kind of scary on a car system that's maybe designed for 20 volts, 12 volts. You mean nominally they run at 14 volts when they're charging? Nowhere near the 548 volts. So I'm going to save this picture, reset, and I'll show you what it looks like after you put the diode in. We've reset to the modified diode, and I've had to change the scale. This is only 10 volts per division. Before it was 100 volts per division. That was the only way I could show that huge spike. This one won't have a spike anywhere near that. So we'll do a quick powered on off test. All right, so... Again, I don't know if you can see it. I'll put it on the screen. We have 17 volts total peak to peak. Huge difference between 548 volts. So again, it uh, is uh, a good thing to have. Now, the other thing I do is I mentioned that I test every contact. Again, I just want to make sure that there's no mistakes in, in construction. So that one works. That one works. And then we power it on. And I check that the LED is lit. I don't know if you can see it with the overhead lights. 
that works that works we don't have any beeps here so that one's 100 percent tested 100 percent good it's going to go in the mail to somebody today y'all have a nice day and i hope you enjoyed the bonus footage